another day to give him the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. If we had a thousand tongues, we still yet could not praise God enough. Now today is Resurrection Sunday. And I know that many of us around the world, many believers around the world come together on this glorious day to seek the will of God for our lives. And I too am excited because I get another opportunity to just show my open thanks to the only wise God, our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ. I want to welcome everyone on the broadcast this morning. This might be a little bit different. I pray that it is. I pray that those that are listening via our teleconference line can be blessed and encouraged and participate with joy. So on this Resurrection Sunday, we come together because, well, in fact, let's just be real. There are a couple of Sundays in the year that, oh, we make sure out of 365 days of the year, we are most sure going to uh, pay homage uh, to our God on Easter and on Christmas. So we have the privilege today to celebrate that Resurrection Sunday, that resurrection process, the death, the burial, and ultimately the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to get right into a wonderful time of fellowship. Uh, our title of the ministry has for years been Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. And I want to encourage every listener this morning, every listener right now, to just be prepared for a roller coaster ride with God. And my prayer is that God will use this moment in time to launch us into what he calls our destiny. And if you can listen aboard and if you can join in, if someone could say amen. Emily. I am so grateful to have the listeners with us today. I want to open the airways and I'm going to ask individuals to that are on the um, phone line until it's such a time to participate to um, actually um, mute the phone so that we don't have any uh, interruption. Uh, I thank God for all of you that are logging in and um, participating in this service. Amen. Amen. I want to yeah. I want to open Amen. the the airways and I'm going to ask Valerie Bryant to welcome us in prayer and to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us and to encourage us with a morning welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, my God, who turned my life. I thank each and every one for joining in. So we're going to do a Most heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for waking us up this morning. Yes, Let us be able to see another day and carry on your day because thank today you. is your day. Thank you. Because you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Without you, we don't know what we're doing, we don't know nothing. And we're just glad to have you. Thank and we you, love Lord. you. And we enjoy the things that you're doing for us and we're doing for you. And we just love you for all that you've done. Thank you, And Lord. we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Jesus Savior, Christ. and we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Now, wherever you might sit today, I want you to just relax. 
because my prayer today is that when it's all said and done, we won't just be readers of the gospel, but we will be followers of Christ like never before. Let me just start off by saying that I'm honored to be affiliated with some of the most awesome believers in Christ, not because of what they've done or what they've accomplished, but in how they've allowed God to change them. And if I could be just so humble enough to allow the spirit of God to have his way in me, if you might just be humble enough to allow God to have his way in you, my God, my God, my God, we could set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are listening, I want to just start off and sing some worship songs. And I'm not going to sing the whole song because I'm not a singer. But what I am is a worshiper. And so I'm going to ask whether you're sitting in a prison cell, whether you're laying in your hospital bed, whether you're in a nursing home, whether you are somewhere you had no idea you'd end up, whether you're at home with your families, whether you're on the highway pulled over to just have time with the Lord, wherever you are right now, I want to set the stage by just saying, Jesus, have your way in me. Take whatever is in me, mold me after your own image that I can be more equipped for the building of your kingdom. And so I just begin to worship and I'm going to ask all of you as I lead this chorus, not the whole song, but as I lead this chorus, wherever you are, just join in and follow after me. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now, as I, we might have new folk come along, and so I want to just set the stage. I will sing the first chorus. Then together, you just repeat what I have sung. Because I want to make sure that these songs get in your spirit, not just in mine. Amen? Amen. So as I sing, this is the day, you wait. After I finish, then you sing, this is the day. Then I will sing, that the Lord has made, you wait. Then you sing, that the Lord has made. Amen? Amen. So that we can flow, and those that are listening by way of telephone or some communication format, we can all be on one accord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Amen. Once again, and wherever you might be, I want you to. Look beyond your present circumstances. And I want you to look to the hills from which cometh your help. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter how your day started. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we will sing and worship once again. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. 
that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Now watch this. Watch this, people of faith. When you sing it this time, I want somebody to just focus and think on where God may have brought you from. And I want you to give God complete control this morning. I want you to set the stage that he understands, that you understand, that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And as you worship in this song, I want you to surrender it all to him. Amen. Amen. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Now give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, right now, I come before your throne of grace and mercy celebrating you, Jesus. I celebrate because you give me the opportunity to do so. I celebrate because, oh God, look where you've brought me from. I celebrate, oh God, because this is the day that the Lord has made for me. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, throughout this service, throughout this time of fellowship, I ask, oh God, that you take the atmosphere and you control everything. I pray in the name of Jesus right now. There may be someone listening to the sound of my voice right now, oh God, that is asking by way of the Holy Spirit to actually see a powerful move of God right now. Father, take all of us out of the picture and consume the atmosphere with your presence. Right now, oh God, somebody's trying not to lean on their own understanding. They're trying to acknowledge you in all their ways. So according to your word, we thank you right now for directing our path. We thank you right now, Father God, for making a way out of no way. We thank you right now, oh God, because today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I don't care where you sit right now. I don't care where you are right now. Make this the day for you that the Lord has made. He's answering prayers. Listen, we serve an awesome God. This is the day that the Lord has made. What if we rejoice? What if we be glad in it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody listening this morning, somebody watching right now, they've been through. You have been through the fire. Yes, Lord. You have had a whole lot of people surrounding you, but yet you felt all alone. I'm speaking to you this morning by way of the Holy Spirit. I want the lame to get up. I want the meek to be bold. I want those that are broke to be funded. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want the broken hearted to be mended. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want the testimonies of the people of God to reign forth. Yes, Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes, Lord. Did anybody wake up this morning confused? Did anybody wake up this morning confused? Feeling alone or abandoned. Well, that may be the case. But I promise you, by the time we end up today, it won't be the end story. 
Can God just bless you right now? Can you bless the Lord right now with an amen? amen. Can you bless him? Just, just give him a hand, praise. Just give him a hand, praise. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm excited to come to you this morning by way of YouTube, Facebook, your telephone, uh, your teleconference, uh, phone calls, whatever it may be. I want you to know that this is the day that the Lord has made. If you will just rejoice and be glad in it, I believe God can use you today right in your present state, just as who you are, to set somebody free. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see amen. that I see that um, we have individuals still trying to to tap into the broadcast and we pray God's blessing be upon them uh, as they continue to come in. I ask for your early forgiveness should we experience any technical difficulties. You see, because when God is doing something, the devil always tries to interfere. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, in fact, when you even set out to do good, evil is yet present anyhow. So it would be no surprise to me if for some reason everything tries to go to Kapook. But I'm believing even by way of osmosis, this message is going out today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. So. I don't want to belabor the fact too much longer. We are in a time right now when people are rushing to grocery stores and they're rushing to uh, stand in line six feet apart, social distancing, but they're rushing to get personal goods. They're talking so much about the Corona and the COVID. What I want to challenge myself to do today is I want to make sure that I mention God more than I mention Corona. Oh, we're going to be challenged today. How many times have you told somebody about Corona? How many times have you told somebody about COVID-19? How many times have you mentioned the stimulus check you might get? How many times have you called on the name of the Lord. In your day, does Corona get more play than our Lord and Savior? Does your situations get more play than our Lord and Savior? It's okay to be honest. I've been guilty of it, but not today. I'm gonna call on the name of Jesus. I'm going to make sure, starting now, that I'm going to say Jesus more than I say COVID-19. Can somebody say amen, Pastor? Amen. I'm going to make sure amen. that I stop telling God about all my problems because he already knows. What am I doing? Reminding him of the obvious as if he forgets? I'm going to stop telling God about all my problems and I'm going to start telling my problems about my God. <laughs> Woo! My God. My God. So on this Resurrection Sunday, many of us are excited all over the world. Folks have gone out to their favorite store and gotten their Easter Sunday outfit. They didn't got their Easter suit on. They've got their hair done just right. What about your soul? What about that inner man that God is trying to deal with? If I had to give a title to today's message, it would be Jesus in you. Now, some are going to read that if you're writing it down. Some are going to read that as Jesus and you. 
See, it's, it's like a dual title, Jesus and you, Jesus and me. But I want you to just for a minute, change how you see it and change how you think about it. And I want to encourage you as you write the title of this message, Jesus in me. Can somebody say Jesus in me? Jesus in me. Hallelujah. See, God just wants to set us up. He already knows what we're going to do. He already knows what we're about. He already knows everything you're going to think before you even think about thinking about thinking about it. He already knows. Amen. Amen. If I can, I want to come to you this morning by way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But today, people of faith, we know that Jesus had to travel down the, that road, Via Della Rosa experience that he had. We all have heard the story that Jesus of Nazareth. We all have heard the stories of all the wonderful miracles he's done. You see, we probably aren't talking today to people that have just never had their Easter outfit on and gone into a church. We're probably talking to the majority of people that have actually gone to church, been a part of a church. But for some reason, we still lack the wisdom that God is trying to embrace us with. Amen. Amen. So today, I want to just, if you'll be so patient with me, I want to take the word of God and I want to help that word become so practical that it becomes applicable. And then for some of you ministers, evangelists, teachers, deacons, prophets, elders, some of you will then have it become so practical that it is applicable that some of us can make it deliverable. Did you get that? We often go to church and we often read the Bible. In fact, we read the Bible all the time. But I would challenge you today that Although we read the same stories over and over and over again, we have a difficult time putting a parallel between what we read, what we understand, and what we do. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Now, somebody might say, well, pastor, that's not true with me. I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what, what it is that you're trying to get me to see. Well, the Bible tells us that very thing that I don't want to do. I know I ought not do it. That very thing I find myself doing. As if I don't know it's not for my good. As if I don't think that God has something else in mind for me. Oh, <laughs> We play with this thing, church. We've been playing church far too long. It's time now to keep it real. It's time now to allow the word of God to come in like a sword and cut us right where we need to be cut. Is there anybody other than me that can actually say this morning? Lord, I've got some things in me that probably need to be cut. I've got some thinking going on that probably needs to be cut out of me. Can somebody this morning just slow it down long enough and give God permission to have his way? If that be you today, if you're sitting where you're sitting, 
and you're sick and tired of being 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 sick and tired. I want you to listen up. I want you to listen clearly because this is the day that the Lord has made. Will you rejoice? Will you be glad in it? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I can just feel the presence of the atmosphere. You see, when God shows up, he doesn't show up just to play with you. He doesn't show up just to hang out with you. He shows up to change you and to show out in you. Can somebody say, it's okay with me, Lord? Show up and show out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know, in the book of John, the 14th chapter, starting at the first verse. Now, I'm going to try to get through this message today, but my God, he's doing so many awesome things. I believe God has set the stage today for us to understand his death, burial, and resurrection was for us. But I believe God is doing something different. I believe God has set the stage for somebody to stand up and testify, testify of God's goodness. I believe right now somebody watching or listening is ready already, even before the word goes out. God's been preparing a place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we will do our due diligence, Father God, as you move me out of the way and you have your way. I ask in the name of Jesus that you take your word, O oh God, and just take one small nugget of your word. You see, I know that I can't handle all of it. I know it's just too much for me, especially in one setting and one appetite. Take your word, O oh God, and plant it so far in the pit of my soul that it takes root. And then it began to manifest itself through my earthly vessel that the people will know it's not me, but it's you in me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your message today. But more importantly, oh God, thank you for taking your word in your people and choosing this day to swell up hope in them, swell up encouragement in them, that they too might see your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Bible says in the book of John chapter 14, the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Now watch this. I want to make sure I try to get through this message. I have no clue how I'm going to make it, but by the help of the Lord. Because every time I sit down and I partake of his word, I get just another nugget that takes me to a whole nother level. It takes me to a whole nother plateau. It takes me somewhere that I had no idea I was going to go. Amen. Amen. It says in the Bible, let not your heart be troubled. Now, isn't it amazing how Jesus knew that his time was drawing near? But instead of God in his earthly nature, instead of Jesus saying, oh, woe is me, look what he does. He says, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, I'm not focusing on me right now. You see, so often, how many of you right now can actually raise your hand and say, sometimes, Lord, I'm worried about 
my family. Sometimes, Lord, I'm worried about my business. Sometimes, Lord, I'm worried about the clothes I'm going to wear. Sometimes I'm worried about what I am going to eat. But I want you to get this. As Jesus was surrounding himself with individuals that he would use for our benefit, Jesus chose to motivate and encourage those that he knew needed encouragement. <laughs> oh my God. Are you seeing how he sets the stage already? He already knows what's to come. He already knows that appointed hour. Just like in you, you have an appointed time to live, to walk, to work, to play, and to go home. But what do you do with your time from your beginning to the end? You see, oh my God, Lord, help me this morning. Instead of him focusing all the time on what's to come, Jesus was focusing on what's right now. I would think that some of us right now need to stop worrying about what's to come and maybe start thinking about what's right now. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I believe God is speaking. And you see, here's the thing. We want to give so many scriptures. We want to show how elegant we are in the word of God. We want to show that we can memorize so many scriptures. All of that has its place. But today, just like the governor's mandate or request, not that many people come together. When you do come together, stay six feet apart. Now, I believe I'm referencing Corona, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. So if I'm going to reference Corona, if I'm going to reference COVID-19, I better reference Jesus more. So let me catch up. Jesus, 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 and one extra, Jesus. Amen? Amen. So in this text, what Jesus is showing us, he understands there's going to be a process in your life. He understands that there are going to be things that you're going to have to overcome. He understands that there's going to be roadblocks setting before you. He understands that you might be sitting in a place right now that you had no idea you'd be there. Look at me. I'm the senior pastor of a church, yet I'm sitting here and there's only one individual within 30 or 50 feet of me. I had no idea. Jesus, where are you in your life? All the scriptures that God has swept up in you. You should be a walking encyclopedia for Jesus by now. The problem is folk are looking at our walk and not so much as I lie and talk. I know it's quiet out there right now because God wants to take us from where we are to where he's calling us to be. Amen. Amen. So he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He's setting the stage for you. When he's talking about God, he wants to make sure you first understand that God is a literal name. He is a jealous God. He instructs us not to have any other God before him. So when he sets the stage, he wants to make sure that you understand, that I understand who he's talking about and who he's talking to. He's talking to the followers. That would be you and I. He's talking to people that should know better. That would be you and I. 
He's talking to people that like the Israelites, 40 years for a three day journey, come on. He's talking to people that already have seen the miraculous working of his being. He's talking to people that have seen him perform miracle after miracle after miracle. He knows your relationships are tore from the floor up. He knows you feel like a lot of people are around you, but yet you feel all alone. You feel abandoned in your heart. You feel dejected, rejected, isolated and alone. He knows all of this. So even when he's heading down the road to ultimate crucifixion, he's not focusing on himself. He's not consumed with what's coming ahead. What lied before he's walking in the now can somebody say Jesus and me Jesus and me can somebody honestly admit that you've never wondered who the real God is oops Amen. you see I'm a Christian pastor however there was a time when I was just as confused as the next. Is it okay if I keep it real this morning? Amen. So I didn't know if I heard the preachers talking about some guy named Jesus. When I first saw it and understood it, I thought it was Jesus. I didn't understand when they stood and said Jesus died on a cross and he rose himself on the third day. I didn't understand what all of that meant because I was living in the midst of my own mucky muck. People dying around me. People just living trifling. And I was confused. I even started searching out other religions and um, I know a lot of African American hue of course one of the religions they that we tend to lean towards is the Muslim faith and let me just say right off the rip that I am not here to insult disrespect or belittle any man or woman boy or girl that prescribes to any walk of faith. You see, the God we serve gives us free will. So as long as God allows us free will, some are going to choose a route for themselves. And so as I was coming up, I remember back in the day, there was this woman named Maureen, and I won't tell you the whole story, and I won't mention her last name because with social media, there's no telling who's going to see this, and I don't want to embarrass her. She invited me once to go to this Buddhist meeting, and they were chanting, and I didn't know what they were saying. So I tried to chime in because she was so pretty. I just wanted a date. And so I started going, nying, 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 like I was riding a motorbike, because that's how their chant sounded to me. Well, they finally kicked me out of that because they realized that I wasn't saying what they were saying. I was like I was on a dirt bike having fun somewhere. And I was getting away with it until I downshifted. I was nying, nying, nying. And then when I downshifted, nying, 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 and I opened my eyes and they were all looking at me and looking to the door. And then I looked to some of my brothers who happened to prescribe to the Muslims. And you know, I just couldn't quite get with them because, well, they all cursed a lot. And they all used the B word a lot. And they all just acted bad. Now I'm not saying 
all Muslims are like that. I'm saying the ones that I saw at that time. So I found myself coming back to the church. Now, why do I say that? Because somebody out there right now, you're questioning whom shall you serve? You're even wondering, has God forgotten about you? You're wondering, should I go to the mosque? Should I go with the Buddhist? Should I chant today or should I pray? Once God showed me who he is. Once I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He came in and he, just like in this text. He came into my life at my lowest point. And he raised my mindset up out of my mooky muck. And I could feel his presence surrounding me, telling me, fear not. Let your heart, don't let your heart be troubled, my child. Stand up. He encouraged me in the midst of my sin. He encouraged me in the midst of my mucky muck. I want to ask somebody out there right now. Is there something going on in your life? Oh, you told the Bible because that's that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to carry the Bible. We're supposed to act like we're something. We're supposed to pretend that we are these holy rollers, holier than now. Hogwash. You go into the churches from the pulpit back. We all have to walk out our own salvation. We all are tempted by the enemy. We all have a faith journey. And that's why he sends them in pairs. Amen? Amen. The question is, who are you paired up with? The question is, who's your road dog? The question is, who do you hang with? The question is, what do you do with your life? The Bible tells us we should ask for wisdom. So I said, well, Lord, what is wisdom? And I had to make me some notes because it was so good. I said, well, I can't forget that. And so in my notes, I wrote down wisdom means to lack. Lack of wisdom means to lack maturity. And I thought, oh, my God. And I said, well, what is that? Why is that so important? And as I begin to study this message today, and I look right in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Then he says, in my father's house are many mansions. Now watch this. He's really not talking about mansions, buildings. I remember growing up as a child and I'd say, ooh, I'm going to get my mansion. I'm going to get my mansion. No, he's talking about a dwelling place, an endless place, a place without walls, a place so big that it can't be built by human hands. In this place, he says, my father's house. Watch this. I say, well, Lord, I've got to understand what you're trying to teach me. He says, well, when you lack wisdom, you lack maturity. <laughs> Why is that so important? Because when we act like children, we do childlike things. Can somebody say, whoop, that might be me. You know, you do certain things that you know you shouldn't do. You know you shouldn't even think about doing them. But it's those things that you find yourself doing. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's okay if I talk to myself today because I need encouragement. So he then says, it helps you in dealing with people and situations. And I said, my God. That almost sounds like common sense. I remember my mother and May Ethel Scott, who I love and adore, like my own grandmother. I was trying to help her one day, and she said to me, Boy, what is wrong with you? 
Why is your brain locking up on you like that? And I said, well, uh, Miss May Ethel, I thought. And she said, boy, you better stop thoughting and start thinking. <laughs> Ooh, that stayed with me for many years to come. A lot of times we think we know what God is trying to do. A lot of times we think we know what God is saying. But a lot of times we lack spiritual maturity to really understand and grasp the totality of what he's trying to teach. So even on this Resurrection Sunday, whether you're in your fancy Easter suit or your pajamas, what I want you to do is to lean not on your own understanding. Hallelujah but to acknowledge God in all your ways and give him an open door to direct your path. And at the end of this message today, I'm gonna to open up the airways and I want people of faith to confess and to testify that yes, Jesus went on the cross. He paid the ultimate ransom that we might have life and that life more abundantly. But in all that he did, we still lack the understanding of what he did as it relates to us. And I know I'm talking to the right people because every time our bills are due, we go, ooh, ooh, I better keep this dollar. Oh, I better. Oh, I better hold on. Because we lack the faith to understand that he's the supplier of all our needs. He can make it rain in a dry, desolate land. He can make it hail down rain. But yet we have little faith. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody today. Somebody has a child out there that you haven't reached out to in a long time because of your pride. Somebody out there right now is going through marital bliss and you are thinking about giving up because it don't look right, don't sound right. <laughs> I want to encourage you today. Let go and let God. Let not your heart be troubled. You see, God knows you got a journey ahead of you. And boy, some of the journey some of you have had to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But God allowed it to happen to you. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. I mean, if God could take the whole world that was null and void and he can create things the way he wanted to do so. And then he would say when he did a thing, mm, mm, show sure enough, that looks good. Look at them mountains over there. Mm, show sure enough, show sure enough. Look at that duck. Mm, that's good. What can he do? with you. <laughs> Are there mountains in your life today? Are there hills that look too tall to climb? Does Jesus have to go on the cross week after week after week before you allow him to resurrect himself in you? Oh yeah, I'm talking to the right group today. Your husband don't listen. Your children just act like they didn't lost their plum for everlasting minds. Looks like every time you turn around, somebody's throwing you under the bus. Look like every time you get a dollar, somebody needs two. Looks like every time you just get a little piece of glory, calamity, bam, hits you. 
the book of John chapter 14. <laughs> Verse 1 is for you. Let not your heart be troubled. Why does he say the heart? Because the Bible tells us God looks upon, watch out now, he looks upon the heart of man. In other words, the heart controls a lot of you. That's why he can say, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can fat mouth all you want to, but what you harbor in your heart, that is really where you are. It's okay. I can't hear a pin drop. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to try to get through this message today, people of faith. He says in verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then watch what he says. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, why couldn't he just do it and stay right where he was? Why couldn't he do the things that he already called into existence right before your eyes? Look what he's doing, church, people of faith. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. So what he's saying is, I have my journey just like you. I have things that I must endure just like you. It's not always going to be rosy. It's not always going to be fresh. It's not always going to sound right. It's not always going to be with people you like. I am going to go and prepare a place for you. Look what he's doing. He's not focused on the journey, the process of the journey. He's telling you, I have a work ahead of me. But I'm not doing this work for me. I'm doing it for you. Hallelujah. So everything you're going to experience, I know you're going to experience calamity. Here's the good part. They're going to throw bricks and mortar at my skull. They're going to pierce me in the side. They're not going to be happy until every drop of blood is out of my body. But I'm not here to focus on that because while you're going through, I don't want you to. I want to take your mind off of all the calamity and the journey. Hallelujah. He says, I want your mind not on always where you're going. I will take you there. If it's your business that you're asking God to bless, give it unto the Lord. If it's your children that you want him to bless, give them unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say, Jesus and me. Jesus and me. See, God's not happy until he gets the glory and he wants to make sure you understand who he is. So when he tells us he's going to go and prepare a place for us, we now know, let, let's look at it this way. Jesus is teaching us through his principles. If I were of the Jewish faith, in the Jewish faith, the young boys would be groomed for a girl. Now, now watch this. When they would take up with each other in holy matrimony, for one year, the girl would still live with her parents. Now watch this. While she lived with her parents, the young boy would go off and he would build and add on to his father's house another dwelling place for he and his bride. Now watch this. 
While the bride, the wife, is over being taught by the women principles, the boy is off building a dwelling place for he and his bride. Do you understand, people of faith, why it's so important that we teach our men principles of God? Because if the men are out of place, so goes the household. Oops, I hope I don't upset too many men. But if the men are out of place and don't understand that the wealth and the riches for the family is going to come based upon his understanding and the wisdom that God has given him for his family. You see, I had the privilege of being raised by awesome women who had wisdom and when I looked it up and I studied it, I'm like, well, what is really wisdom? I don't know. It's giving us an understanding of how to deal with people in situations. Lack of wisdom is a lack of emotional intelligence. In other words, how many of us have no common sense my mother used to tease and say, look, boy, all the schooling you get, don't be an educated idiot. Don't be an educated fool. You better get some common sense. <laughs> Can anybody relate to that? <laughs> Have we been walking out here acting like we know so much and just look at our lifestyles? You can tell we didn't lost our rabid minds. See, it's not that you're stupid, not that you're a dummy dummy. Like me. <laughs> it's that we don't know about the Jesus in me. So as I carry on with this, you see, Jesus is saying that I'm going to go prepare a place. I'm going to go and prepare a place, a place that you can dwell and look how, if we look at the Jewish people, why is it that they always have money, or at least seem like it? You see, we teach our children, when you turn 18, you're grown. You get out on your own. You got to make your own way like I did. Dummy. When they were young, they were being taught, you don't leave. You come right here. You come where your father is. And now you add on. So when your father should leave, you have a lot to take over. I pray that I'm speaking to somebody today. I pray that somebody is going to wake up today and say, my God, I'm broke because I act broke. I don't have any money because I act like I don't have money. I don't have money because I don't know what to do with the money that I do get. You ever find somebody to get an income tax check <laughs> and the check already spent before it hit the bank? <laughs> you broke before you even get your wealth because you're thinking broke. Oops. Well, Pastor, I thought this was going to be about Resurrection Sunday. I want to talk about Jesus on the cross. I want to see about how he went down to Via Della Rosa. I want to hear about how they stoned him. This supposed to be like, uh, this supposed to be about the resurrection. Well, it is. But it's about the resurrection of you. It's about the resurrected Jesus in you. Many of us still got Jesus back there on the cross. We can't get him off the cross. You see, on that third day, he rose again. Why is he still on the cross in your life? Why is it that he can't move from glory to glory to glory? That's because a lot of us still run around in trouble, scared half to death. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Where is Jesus now? Somebody say, Jesus in me. Jesus in me. <laughs> he says, I'm going to go do something. I'm going to go on a journey for you. And when I get to where I've got to be, I want you to know that I want you there with me. I want to be with you. In other words, I am setting a place for me with you, for you. Can somebody say Jesus in me? Jesus in me. You see, when you go to court, you better act scared because you didn't forgot the Jesus that got off the, the cross and he's walking and living in you. Amen. See, you didn't forgot that no weapon formed against you shall prosper because you still worrying about your problems. Somebody say Corona just so I can say Jesus twice. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I have an attorney friend of mine, Eric King. And boy, I tell you the God's honest truth. Sometimes I don't even like taking that brother's call. But he's been challenging me in some ways, church, that's really been making me think. And then this old health scare going on, can't even meet in our churches. I want to tell you something. I'm sitting in a place right now that I had no idea I would be. There's no choir. There's no amen corner. <laughs> There's no deacon's row. <laughs> My God. Would God have would God have taken such a time as this to just shake us all up? Would God have done this for us that we can get things right, that we can get things together? Would God have changed the way things go so that we can really understand what it is he's doing in our lives? Oh my God, I hope I'm talking to the right person today. My hope is in Jesus. I want to hear from somebody who's really been troubled in their heart. Somebody who's been nervous about an outcome. Somebody who's fearful because the one you love more than anything seems not to even remember your name. I want to speak to somebody today that was just about to give up. That was really on the on at their wits end to say, Lord, I need you. Help me, Jesus. And he says, I will go prepare a place for you. It is in my father's house. In other words, I've created a dwelling place that when it's all said and done, the kingdom of heaven is all yours. It's not about the buildings. It's not about everything that you might want to talk about or think about. It's everlasting life. Life more abundantly. Life where you can be confident. You don't have to worry about your gas and electric bill. You don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. But I want to encourage you today that while you yet go through your journey, what would happen if like Jesus, if you take your eye off of your journey and put your heart on encouraging somebody through theirs? Has somebody been on a journey lately? Amen. Has somebody... Seeing God really allow them to go through something today? Amen. Do you feel like you yourself have been on a cross? Persecuted? Taken advantage of? Jesus is saying, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he's also saying, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And church, this morning, people of faith, I want to encourage you. 
if you've been wavering in your in your walk if you've been questioning what God shall I serve like in the book of Joshua I want to encourage you as for me and my household we shall serve the Lord in fact I want every listener right now every listener under the sound of my voice right now I want you to say as far as far as me as far as me and my household as far as me and my household we shall we shall serve the Lord serve the Lord from the Lord. From, the from the eldest from the eldest to the babe the babe as far as me and my household, we will serve the Lord. As far as me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. I will be encouraged today. I will be encouraged today. You see, it doesn't matter where you are. What it matters is, is he there with you? And if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? Let not your heart be troubled. Stop telling God, excuse me, about all your doggone problems. He already know. Why don't we start telling our problems about our God? Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what's what he says? After he says, after he tells you that where I am, there ye may be also, he says, and whither I go, ye know. And the way you know. Now watch this. How in the world are we going to know something lest it be given to us through wisdom by way of the Holy Spirit? See, that's why when we ask, we should be asking for wisdom. Wisdom gives us knowledge of people and situations. My God. See, none of that had to do with your former education. Oh, well, Pastor, I dropped out in the ninth grade. Who cares? Well, Pastor, I've been locked up so many years. I've been locked up more years than I've been walking free. Who cares? Well, Pastor, I was taken taken advantage of as a young girl, and I just don't feel equipped. I just don't. I, 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 I. Who cares? The Bible tells you. He goes to prepare a place for you. He goes on a journey to prelude what you're going to go through. I know you're going through stuff, my child. It's no different than your own earthly children. You look at your child and you look at some of the stuff they do. And you understand why Jesus looked at his and said, how much longer must I suffer thee? In other words, you are doing something that you have no business doing. You are walking out a life that you have no business walking out. Can somebody say, yay, Lord? Yay, Lord. Can somebody say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Are your children running mucky muck? Is your spouse acting a plum fool are we going to spend our days telling our girlfriends and our guy friends about oh woe is me or are we going to give Jesus permission to come off the cross and to come in to us he died that none be lost he died that none be lost he suffered for you and for me, he paid the ultimate price that you could be set free. But watch this. It's not that you just be set free. He wants to equip you through your journey that you can help build the kingdom and help set the captives free. Amen. And as I was being educated recently, the name of the ministry has always been Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. Not that the ministry is going to go around the world, but wherever God sends you, sends us, that we can keep it real. But as I'm growing and as I'm maturing and as I'm allowing God to purge me and to change me, I was talking to my dear brother 
Eric King. And I was saying, my God. And we were talking. And so it reminded me that we are a kingdom builder. So I want to announce today that we're launching a new ministry. Not the ministry as you know it or think it, but the ministry in you. You are a kingdom builder. You have been set apart. You've been allowed to go down your own Via Della Rosa. That you can come out of it purged. That you can raise up and you can help set the captives free. I want to encourage somebody today. There's a ministry brewing up inside of you. There's a ministry, there's a work of God brewing up inside of you. Will you allow the spirit of Christ to allow God to raise up? If God has called you to the street corners, if God has called you to the nursing homes, if God has called you to feed people, if God has called you to the pulpit, if God has called you to the schools, if God is wherever God has called you. Take a look at what you've been through. Take a look at where he's brought you from and ask God, God, launch me that you be glorified. Because if he went to prepare a place for you, and if he says, when I get there, you'll be there also. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, Lord I, am ready I am ready to be launched, to be launched and resurrected. resurrected. Hallelujah. Now, Thomas said, you're always in your midst. You got to be careful because every time you set out to do something good, you're always going to have a know-it-all that wants to tell you what's right and what's wrong. You always, the devil's always going to have us compete against each other. Get out of that. Learn to stay in your lane. Be who God calls you to be. Do what God's called you to do. Don't worry about the next man. Don't worry about the other women. You just be who God called you to be. Look what Thomas says. Said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said in him, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, know him and have seen him. Somebody say, fear not. Fear not. Somebody listening right now. Somebody watching on social media. I want you to just go to somebody today and I want you to encourage them and just say, fear not. You see, God is raising up a new mantle. He's raising up a new army. And that army is you. You see, so often we run around and we brag about our pastors. Oh, I go to church with Bishop, Dr. Dr. Bishop. But how about us bragging on you? How about us bragging on how you were in a household where your your husband talked about believing? Your husband went to church and stood in the deacon line. But that wasn't a problem. The problem was when he came home. You had a hard time seeing deacon, reverend, bishop, doctor in the living room. I want you to pray and ask God to open a way that you, my friend, can set the captives free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right where you sit today. I hope and pray this message today reaches somebody that's maybe incarcerated. And like Michelle Riddle encouraged me on last Sunday, 
You know, incarceration doesn't have to be behind the wall. A lot of people are walking around feeling like they're in jail and locked up already. Today, why not say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why not really embrace what Jesus' life was all about? His life was about you and for you. He went on a journey for you. Will you go on one for him? Will you encourage yourself today? No matter where you are, no matter who's there with you. I want to open up the airways for people that might be listening. And I want to give you an opportunity to just share. You see, so often we look for all of our answers through the pastors. That's a part of the process, but it's not the end of all in because the Bible I read tells me that he suffered that none be lost. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that you're supposed to all of a sudden God's going to speak to you. Now you go out trying to preach the gospel and don't even know what it says yourself. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, will you allow God to change your heart and change your mind that he can get the glory? Will you stop and just say, yea, Lord, I'm going to open the airways now and I want on this Resurrection Sunday. Now, we have to give some order to it. If everybody starts shouting out, we won't be able to get it to everybody. But I want to give a few minutes to let people just encourage, practice, if you will, to give a testimony. Now, don't don't get up here and take all day shortcake. But I want you to be able to just speak to the people. And I'm going to start with some of those that might be on the phone. If there be one that have a real brief testimony, something that's on your heart, something that God is giving you for the people of God to encourage them. You see, all that you've been through, yeah, it might have been bad, might be bad. But it's not for your bad. It's for your good. Will you just let go and let God? Will you allow his death, burial and his resurrection to resurrect a new spirit man in you? I want to encourage you today. As I'm trying to process my way as well. Losing one facility and now moving our way on to another. Everybody's got a journey. Everybody's got stuff they've got to go through. If there be someone on the phone, I'm going to share a special guest with you shortly. But if there be someone on this phone that would like to speak and let your testimony reign through, I want to give you an opportunity to do so right now. Is there somebody going through something that you believe God is now going to strengthen you? And you believe that he, he has the answer for you. Is there a one? I have people calling me on my direct phone trying to get through on the line. But God has here who needed to be here. Amen. Amen. Is there one that would like to share? Amen. I'm going to I'm going to step out of the way and If we're going to be a kingdom builder, 
then we need to reach those that need to be reached. The Bible says that we'll go to the highways and byways and compel them to come. So if no one else has a testimony here, oh, you all do. But the day will come when you are encouraged to speak out. I love you in Christ. I'm going to open the door up. This is a young man that uh, <clears throat> he's at his own Via De La Rosa. And I'm going to open the window for opportunity for about two minutes to just let him give a testimony of God's grace and mercy and his glory. I'm going to bring up now Brother David Jackson. Give him an opportunity to just sit before you and share his heart. Thank you, Brother Pastor James. Yes, my name is um, David Jackson. I just got a testimony today. I want to thank God for waking me up this morning because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, my testimony is today uh, that uh, when I got out of prison, I came home, I didn't have nothing, you know. I mean, I lost everything, you know, through the streets and everything. So I just want to tell all you brothers and sisters out there that if you ever get to your wit end, just call on the name of Jesus because he's able to do a ceiling above all that you could think of as, you know. So, you know, when I came out, you know, I was just thinking like, well, you know, where I'm going to run to, who I'm going to turn to, you know, and um. All I can say is just God is good, you know, I mean, because I was thinking today, I was just, <laughs> Lord have mercy, I was at my way in. Like I said, I lost everything, clothes, shoes, everything. So I'm like, Lord have mercy. I wore the same things for 30, 30 days. It's just a blessing because God is good. But as you can see now, I got to change the clothes because God is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's just my testimony for the day. So if anybody just doubt God, just trust and believe and have faith that he's able and uh, silly to do above all he can think of as. And I just want to pray for all you brothers and sisters out there through this coronavirus that y'all be safe. Jesus is real. And thankful Pastor James. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there's a thing going around say, each one reach one. Amen. So look at my face. Hear my voice. Your testimony is real. So is your life. Jesus knew the appointed time would come when he would be crucified. Crucifixion was the worst form of death there was. But even through all of that, he found it in his heart to encourage us. So I want each and every one of you be encouraged. Fear not, for the Lord thy God is with thee. He went off to prepare a place for you and for me that we can sit back and say, Jesus in me. Jesus, some may say Jesus and me. Some may say Jesus in me. But no matter what you say, say Jesus. I am so encouraged today. I thank God for those of you who chose to join us. I'm so encouraged for all the young people that might take time out of their life to listen. God is doing a new thing, but he's doing it through us. I want everyone under the sound of my voice, if you don't have a ministry home, here at Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries, 
I would love to shepherd you in your kingdom builder capacity and to launch your ministry. Yes, God sends them out in pairs. So who are you connected to? Don't just preach the gospel. Live it. Don't put your fleshly desires ahead of the cross. Live it. Don't give up on your family, your loved ones. Live it. Don't give up on Jesus. Live it. Jesus in me, my God, my God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Just where you are, worship him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Now watch what he says. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time now. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Woo! Well, I remember years ago, I used to hear the pastor say, all minds clear. <laughs> and I used to think, well, that means we ain't thinking about nothing. So I don't want your mind and your heart to be empty. I want to ask you, are you encouraged today? Is your mind and your heart full? You better ask somebody, shortcake. So before we close out of here and we have Sister Riddle do our benediction today, I want to encourage each of you. This is something that we say in our ministry all the time. And I want you to repeat this after me wherever you sit. I am. I am. I am. The absolute best. The absolute best. The absolute best. That God, God, that God has to offer. Has to offer. Has to offer. Now look at somebody and say, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Shortcake. Shortcake. <laughs> Shortcake. Hallelujah. You see, Hallelujah. even in the midst of your haters doubting on you, you want to remind them the God that's in you. You want to remind them that your mind is not on your past. The cross is there, but it is behind me. He says, pick up my cross daily. But I don't pick it up and just lay down on it. I've got to walk out my salvation daily. Are you going through something today? You know, they say that it's easier for a camel to go through the needle of an eye than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's not because he's rich that he can't make it in. It's because of what he thinks based on what's in his heart. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking today, people of faith? You're not making mistakes because you're dumb. We make our mistakes because of what we think or what we don't think. I pray today somebody is encouraged 
This may not have been your traditional Easter service. <laughs> but from where a lot of people come from. Wow. They just need to hear some encouragement. So today, as Jesus went on the cross, as he went to prepare a place for us, he says that I'll send you back a comforter, the Holy Spirit, and it'll make all things known unto you. My God, may the wisdom of God fall upon each and every one of you. May the spirit of God fall into your heart. And may you realize that you are the absolute best that God has to offer. And for you haters out there, I'll just tell you, don't get it twisted. Shortcake. I may have been that. I may have done those things. I may have gone through those things. But now God is equipping me to help set the captives free. Isn't that awesome? Amen. That God can choose a wretch like me. To actually be a kingdom builder. Amen. Amen. So I want to partner with you today. Any of you that are interested in being a kingdom builder. Right here at Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. Nobody in the church has ever heard me say that term. Kingdom builder. But kingdom builder ministries. Will be a ministry of ministries of ministries. So I ask you. What's your ministry? What has been your journey? What have you been through? What has God delivered you from? Because whatever he's brought you from, just like he went to prepare a place for you and where he was, you will be also. So will your testimony. God's doing a wonderful work in you. You just have to change how you see it. God bless each and every one of you. Before we close, I want to open the airways for my rib, one of the best ministers that I've ever been privileged to walk with. And that is my wife, my partner, Sister Kirsten James. I'm going to open the floor for her to have a moment to speak. And I pray those that are listening and viewing will be able to hear her words. I'll ask that she speak up a little louder than she probably normally does. Sister Kirsten. To God be the glory, everyone. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad to have everybody joining us in this phone conference on Facebook. This has been amazing. The outreach, the, um, the number of people that we've been able to reach this morning has been just phenomenal. So we just thank God for this opportunity uh, to spread his word to his people, to those desiring uh, a life change and a heart change and just encouraging us, especially during the time that we're in you now. We just praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor James, for um, ministering this morning uh, the word of God. I pray that all have been blessed. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank Join you. Again God bless. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Michelle Riddle to give us the benediction. But before we do so, if there's anybody that's been walking a life lost, Uncertain of your destiny. Searching religions and different faiths. I can't speak for you. I can't choose for you. But as far as me and my household, we shall serve the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to just give us all an opportunity because you see, this goes from the front of the pulpit to the back of the building. Nobody's exempt. So we all should repent. We should all turn from our ways. So repeat this prayer after me. Jesus. Jesus. Today, Lord. Today, Lord. This is today, the day. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I shall rejoice. I shall rejoice. I shall rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Father, I have sinned along my journey. Father, I have sinned along my journey. I repent, O oh God. I repent, O oh God. And I ask right now. And I ask right now. And I ask right now. That you come into my heart. That you come into my heart. That you come into my heart. Share forgiveness. Share forgiveness. Share forgiveness. Love. 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 And grace. And grace. And grace. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For not giving up on me. For not giving up on me. For not giving up on me. And not forgetting about me. For not forgetting about me. In, sp in spite of myself. In spite of myself. In spite of myself. Have your way in my life now, Lord. Have your way in my life right now. Have your way in my life right now. I shall be encouraged. I shall be encouraged. I shall be encouraged. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Died on Calvary. Died on Calvary. Died on Calvary. And paid the ultimate price. And paid the ultimate price. And paid the ultimate price. For me. For me. He went and prepared a place for me. He went and prepared a place for me. So now I repent. So now I repent. Open my heart. Open my heart. Open my heart. And receive you, Christ. Receive you, Christ. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Head of my life. Head of my life. Head of my life. And head of my household. And head of my household. And head of my household. As for me. As for me. As for me. And my household. And my household. And my household. We shall serve the Lord. We shall serve the Lord. We shall serve the Lord. I am. I am. I am. The righteousness. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of Christ. Of Christ. Of Christ. Because he said so. Because he said so. Because he said so. And for you haters. For you, for you haters. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Shortcake. <laughs> Shortcake. Father, thank you for receiving me now. I thank you, O oh God, because according to your word, if I confess my faults and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord, and he raised himself from the grave that I might have life and life more abundantly. Upon confession and believing, O oh God, the Bible tells me that I shall be saved. So I want to encourage everybody now, whether you're listening by telephone or whether you're watching. If you said that prayer, it's a brand new day. Fresh anointing is coming your way. This has been Pastor Sonny James. I'm so excited about Kingdom Building Ministries, which will be a min which will be ministries within ministries within ministries. What is your ministry? Just look in the mirror. And don't get it twisted, shortcake. God bless you. If anyone wants to reach me, Please feel free to call upon me. My direct cell number is 513-487-8843. Again, 513-487-8843. My email is pastorsunnyjames at gmail.com. That's S-O-N-N-Y. J-A-M-E-S. Call me sometime. Let's chat about it. More importantly, let's be about it. God is so good. Yes, he is. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. I want to meet you on the other side. 
please call me, write me, get in touch with me. We'd love to receive any of your gifts. If you feel blessed today, please give. And don't give just because that's the church thing to do. Give because God has blessed you with it to be able to give. And give because the ministry, all ministries all over the world, need your support to continue to reach the lost and to compel them to come. Please give. Give abundantly. Give sparingly. And I want to do something now. I, uh, when my wife was setting up the um, the page, it asked for a financial goal. And uh, because we have a new building that we're looking at, the uh, first thing that came to my mind was, oh, $150,000. No, we need $250,000. Then I had to repent. Because... The God I serve first has to reach each person where they are to have a heart to even just give one dollar. And look what he did with bread. They've had a whole lot of people. So I want to encourage you. You see, no matter what our ministry's financial goals are, if you don't have a heart to give, it doesn't matter if I ask for a million dollars. How about every listener under the sound of my voice? Trust my car payment is not made by your dollars. Blessed be the Lord. My house isn't provided by your dollars. Blessed be the Lord. Every dime that we get it goes out to reach those that are lost, that are coming into the building of the kingdom. And of course, you got to have electricity. You got to have all that stuff, too. So it helps. But I'm going to encourage you right now. You can go to Cash App. You can send it in. If you don't know how, send me an email. Call me. But give today. The Kingdom Builder Ministries can help launch those of you who are called at such a time as this. So, there it is. Pastor James did like so many other churches. He asked for an offering. But here's where it's different. Give a dollar. And those of you who have a heart to give more, Bless according to the measure of faith that's in your bosom. Press down, shaken together. God can do abundant if you'll let him. So everyone listening today, don't let the day pass. We want to worship him in spirit and in truth. Part of giving is a part of our worship. Would you give a dollar to help a small ministry Continue to reach the masses. And like Brother David Jackson, not everybody's going to be coming from prison. But when they do, they can't be naked people. They can't be tore from the floor people. You eat. Can't they? God bless you today. I'm asking that you Find it in your heart to bless this ministry that we can continue to go to the highways and byways and compel them to come. And you have my word. Everything that God sows through you, we will sow into the kingdom of heaven. And I promise you to lead the way as a kingdom builder. So on behalf of Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries, today we launch... Kingdom Builder Ministries. The ministry is in you. God bless you. Be safe. Be healthy. And just remember, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And don't get it twisted.
shortcake. Michelle Riddle and the benediction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The benediction is coming from Genesis 24 to 25th verse. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, prevent you falling before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Yes, Lord. To the only wise God our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise on that. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the redeemed say so. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. God bless you. This is Pastor Sonny James. We love you in Christ. If you need me, call me. And as the song used to say, I'll be there. God bless you. 513-487-8843 on behalf of Sonny and Kirsten James and all the believers or believers of Christ, we like to thank you. We appreciate you. We value your love for building God's kingdom. All right, kingdom builders, go about your business. Get on about it. Be about it. Be about it, about it. <laughs> God bless you. Love you in Christ. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. That's a good one. You couldn't tell that was your first time.